1943. Grayson Grune, Apers, Sikkim 365.com, recruiting analyst, host, uh, co-host with Craig, the uh, Bear Cast, but many other things. He's got constant stories up about recruiting visitors, et cetera. The spring game is tomorrow. Grayson, let's start with the visitors list. I, I saw Lagway among some others who will be in town. Obviously, they, they want as many as they can get there. Your thoughts about the list overall? How would you grade it? <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty good list. It's kind of a um, – it's an interesting one because I think a lot of people have been looking at it and trying to say, you know, how many of the high-end prospects are they going to get on campus? But you have to remember, you know, Baylor's gotten a lot of guys on campus throughout the spring, and um, and so guys are kind of making these decisions to go see places that maybe they haven't seen before. So I think for the 2023 class, um, you know, it's a lot of commits. It's a lot of, you know, the guys that they've kind of been on for a while. Um, you know, the, the name that probably stands out the most in that list is Hershey running back Amarian Peterson, uh, who's a guy that they've really, um, you know, prioritized in this recruiting cycle. He's a big time running back prospect, would fit really well with what Baylor's trying to do in the wide zone scheme. Um, but I think the biggest kind of area to look at on this list is the 2024 class. Um, Baylor has a lot of their high-end targets coming in for this visit, including uh, Derek Lagway, who's one of the best quarterbacks in the entire country. Um, they got Colton Sirac, who is Caden Sirac's brother. Caden, of course, is a 2022 signee. Um, and then Colton is a really, really good prospect um, in the 2024 class. I actually think he's probably going to be a four-star uh, type guy. I think he'll be more highly rated than Caden was. So I really like what I'm seeing from the 2024 guys. I think it's a really talented list. And overall, you know, I'd probably give it a B plus. You know, they don't have a lot of their, a lot of the top, top guys um, in the entire country as far as the 2023 class goes. Um, but I think they have just enough to make this, you know, a really, really, you know, talented list and a list that I think they can, you know, do some work with. Grayson, knowing that we're not going to see a lot of the guys at wide receiver that we're probably going to see in the fall when that depth chart uh, really gets sorted out, what are you looking to see from that position in particular tomorrow and how they use certain guys? Yeah, you know, I'm kind of looking to see if there's a guy that stands out as an alpha. Um, and, you know, it's kind of hard in these spring games to really get a sense of, you know, what guys are doing really well and who's really standing out but I would say if you go back to last year there were a few takeaways that I think were pretty obvious and the main one was Abram Smith you know playing a huge role in their offense during the season so I'm wondering if there will be a wide receiver who steps up the way that um, Abram did a year ago we might see that the running back position as well but I think at wide receiver you know I'm looking for guys like Monterey Baldwin, you know, how is he going to be used this year? Because last year he wasn't really used much as a route runner. He was more used in the run game with the jet sweep action and the short passing game. I'm curious if maybe something changes and he expands his game. And I think that's something that we probably all have a question about is, is he really a guy that can go deep downfield? Can he really win in the intermediate route? I think we need to see that more on film and see that more at Baylor. I think he has the talent to do it, but the question is, is he there yet? Um, as far as the other guys, you know, you look at Josh Cameron, a former, or I guess a walk-on, uh, who is very, very talented, who's really stood out so far in this spring. You know, how does he look? Does he really look like a, an alpha? Does he look like a guy who's really going to, to potentially start on the outside or the younger guys like a Javon Gibson or a, you know, or Jalen Ellis going to step up. You know, I think Jalen Ellis and Seth Jones and Gavin Holmes, those are all three guys that I think everyone wants to see a lot out of uh, in this spring game as well. So really a ton of unknowns, but I'm excited. Uh, there, there's a lot of really good young guys. So I'm curious, you know, who really stands out. I didn't even mention Armani Winfield, who has kind of stolen the show at the wide receiver position as well. Um, but yeah, it's a talented group, but there's a lot to figure out for sure. And I'm just hoping we see some flashes of potential and what could be when the fall rolls around. Grayson, uh, locally, it's been kind of a mixed bag for Baylor in recruiting. When you think about like the Waco Temple, Colleen area, they definitely, you know, you mentioned Monterey Baldwin from being down at Colleen. We just saw Darian Gallette from uh, Marlin uh, release his top list of final schools, I suppose. And uh, Baylor not on there. That much of a surprise to you? Uh, it was a little bit until I really looked at the list. And, um, you know, to be, to be frank, the list is really just 
a bunch of blue blood schools and a bunch of schools that, um, you know, have big fan bases, they're big market schools. And I'm sure, um, you know, there's a possibility that NIL is involved as well because Darian is a fantastic player, a really, really good athlete, and I think a special linebacker prospect. And his top 12 is filled with, you know, A&M, Texas, Ohio State, Oklahoma, Alabama, LSU, Notre Dame, Oregon. I mean, a lot of the, the top programs in the country. So, um, good for him to release his top 12. It's unfortunate for Baylor because the Bears were in on him really early and were a school that he really liked for a long time. But I think as the process kind of dragged on, um, there were maybe things that probably became more important to Darian. And, you know, he made his list and these are his top 12. And so I'm curious where he does end up because he's a fantastic player and I think he's an NFL guy. How are they going to split up, you think, the quarterback reps? Yeah, I think that's a good question. I, You know, last year they, you know, Jacob Zeno was actually the guy who got the start a season ago. So I would think Gary's going to get the start this year and then um, he'll probably be on the one team and then I would guess Shapen will be on the twos team um, and then Kyron Drones will get reps kind of mixed in there as well. Um, I'm hoping they do it more like last year uh, because if you remember last year, Kyron Drones got some reps, but Shapen got quite a few got quite a few drives in Gary got a bunch of drives in and Jacob got a bunch of drives in and I'm hoping the top three guys get some looks um you know I want Kyron to actually go out there and be able to get some reps this spring and show what he can do while also of course allowing Gary and Shapen to kind of battle it out for uh you know the top down the depth chart even though I think at this point it's not necessarily a foregone conclusion but but I think that Gary has had a very impressive spring and I think it's allowed him to um, hang on to the starting quarterback job, at least for now. Do you think if I ask Dave Aranda what they're looking for at the portal, he'll tell us? <laughs> uh, I doubt it. I, I really doubt it. I doubt he would say specifically what they're looking at. It would probably be an answer kind of like, you know, we're always looking to improve our roster or something along those lines. And I think it's pretty apparent, and I think we can draw conclusions based on the depth they have on the roster and kind of the injuries that they've suffered. And, um, you know, I think we can draw conclusions, but I don't think he'd give you necessarily a straight answer on positions they're going to look at. And honestly, I think that's probably the smart way to do it. Not really answer it and just say, you know, you're always looking to get better. And, and I think that's what any program is doing. So I think he would be lying if he said they're not looking for anyone in the portal. But I think, you know, in his mind, you know, they're trying to get better. And I think there are some positions that they're going to look at. We've talked about, quite a few of them, whether it's wide receiver or upgrading on the offensive line or looking at safety and trying to get uh, maybe more veteran experience there or even cornerback as well. There's a lot of options and a lot of routes that they could go. And I, I still think they're definitely going to look to add some talent to the roster. Grayson, you've mentioned some of the players who are like the next level or the next, you know, wave of talent. Is there Are there maybe two or three young men that have either redshirted or even new on campus or a couple of others that you are more interested in seeing how much maybe they've jumped from one level to the next tomorrow? Yeah. Oh gosh. You know, I do recruiting. So there's a bunch of guys that I'm going to be looking at and trying to, to see the kind of jumps they make. So I'll kind of quickly go through a few of the guys that I, I'm really, really looking forward to seeing. So the first one is Armani Winfield and he's a true freshman. Um, but guys, he is, so talented he's really had an impressive spring he's made an immediate impact and so for him to come on campus so quickly and do this it, it that's a big deal for Baylor and if they don't take a transfer portal guy it's because they feel good about kind of what he's brought to the table along with some of the other guys but that would also indicate that they feel good about how Presley's injury and that Jalen Ellis is taking a step um, but I think Armani would definitely be a, a big reason why uh, they would decide not to. And then I would also say kind of at wide receiver as well, Javon Gibson is a very talented player as well. Um, it's just a matter of if he's ready or not. You know, is he a year away or is this a year where he can be ready to go? Um, so he's another one at wide receiver I'm curious about. Um, I know we've talked a ton about Jordan Jenkins, uh, the former Lindale running back. Um, he's sensational and he really looks to me like he fits this offense really well. The question is, you know, is he better than the guys they have on the roster? And can he fill a particular role? Can he come in and take over the goal line running back job? And if so, 
he might find himself on the field because physically he looks like the biggest guy on the roster. He looks the closest to Abram Smith to me, and he's even bigger than Abram. And so I, I think he's a guy that I'm definitely going to be focused in on to see uh, the steps he's taken in the right direction. Um, you know, on the defensive side, Jackie Marshall uh, at that jack spot. I know there's a lot of depth there when you talk about Matt Jones and Garmin Randolph, but both of those guys are dealing with injuries. So I really think Jackie's going to get an opportunity uh, tomorrow to really show what he can do. And I have a feeling he's going to be very impressive. He's a guy that, that man, on film. I and mean, when you talk about a guy that's 240 pounds returning punts for touchdowns, I mean, you just don't see that type of athleticism every day. Um, and then at the defensive back spot, safety in particular, uh, Devin Lemire, uh, the redshirt freshman out of Maynard. Uh, I really like his game, and he's really impressed this spring. He's a guy who's kind of really asserted himself into that safety uh, role. I'm not going to say he's locked up the starting job, but I do think he's made the biggest statement up to this point. Now he's got to put on on display on Saturday, um, but I really like what I've seen from him. He was a guy I really liked coming out of high school, and you know he's looking to come in and possibly replace JT Woods, who had a fantastic year for the Bears a year ago. So I'm curious to see if he's taken that step and if he can really be a guy that's dependable on the back end of the defense. Because of who they've been able to recruit, and again, coming off what they did in Matt Rules last year, even with what happened 2-7, and seven, and then coming off of what they did last year, um, do you feel like those who are ready to play, those whose time it is to play, are better players than even those who are we see getting maybe drafted? I'm not saying they're at that level, but do you see like, – is the next level of way more talent than it was three or four years ago? Yeah, that's a, that's an interesting question because, I mean, I guess you kind of have to compare these guys to the draft class that they have now, uh, which is a really, really good draft class. You know, there, there's going to be a lot of guys that get drafted mm -hmm. next week. So a lot of talent, you know, and you don't want to kind of overestimate the talent on the roster because, as we all know, it's hard to get drafted. I mean, we've seen a lot of really good Baylor players that simply did not get drafted at all because it's difficult. And it's more than just being an impact player on the field. It's more than staff. Uh, you got to be the right kind of person and the right kind of cultural fit to make it in the NFL. And I really think the guys on this on these rosters, I mean, I, I look at it up and down. I'm like, they're talented. They're great guys. I just I see a lot of guys who – could potentially be NFL guys. And I actually think the depth is deeper than really it has been in a long time. You know, depth being, I think there's guys that are young that are potentially going to be NFL guys down the road. So I do, I think they're in a better position today than they really have been in a long time, uh, at least NFL wise. And so I think that that talent is going to show up and you're really going to see it on the defensive line and the offensive line. They're very, very talented there. But beyond that, they have a lot of young guys who I just think are going to step into big roles and potentially be NFL guys, like in Armani Winfield um, specifically. But, yeah, I really like this roster. I like what they've built. And I think the recruiting part of this has really allowed them to build depth and build quality NFL depth on the back end of their roster, which is really important. You need depth to sustain the long season in college football. And when you're able to have – you know, really high quality depth behind starters who are potentially NFL guys as well. That's when you start becoming a team that can win 10 games every single year, which is what Baylor's trying to become, get more consistent and therefore help recruiting, help continue building that depth for the future. Grayson, thank you. See you tomorrow. Grayson Grunhafer, Sikkim365.com recruiting analyst. A lot. A mouthful. The last couple of segments on Baylor's spring game coming up tomorrow.